Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Join us here at each show where we visit RV products and services and RV tips, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So relax, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about RVs. Hello everybody, I'm Rob Scribner, the host of RV Talk Radio, and today is a very special day because we are doing an interview with not just one, not just two, but three RV families today. So today we're going to use RV Travel Quest, which is me and Sherry. We're going to have the Freedom Theory and Spot the Scots all at the same time doing an interview. The subject we've chosen to talk about is RV burnout, cabin fever, and communication as a family. But before we get started, I just want to remind those that are listening, if you'd like to contact us and ask us any questions or have any subjects you'd like us to talk about on RV Talk Radio, please go to the website at rvtalkradio.com, go to the contact page, and let us know what's on your mind. You can also contact me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you're a company with a product or service, RV-related, please feel free to contact us. If there's a, a product you'd like to, or a service you'd like to get on our show, uh, give us a holler, give us your ideas, and we'll see what we can do to work that out. Before we start the interview, I want to explain a few things of how we had to do this. We are fortunate enough to be at the same location of Freedom Theory, which is Kaylee and Josh. So we got together into our RV and coordinated with Spot the Scots, which is Christy and Brian, and did a phone call with them and did a conference call with them at the same time. What we didn't realize is we, uh, I, I, we're not sure what caused it, but we do have a little bit of static in the recording when, and we'll try to adjust it out, but it did occur and we're not quite sure what caused it, but we're using really good equipment to do this. But anyway, so please be uh, patient with the crackling sound. We have some kind of electronic, uh, something interfered a little bit with this interview, but it's very easy to hear and very uh, very clear. So what you'll hear is Spot the Scots will be on the phone on a conference call with Sherry and I and Kaylee and Josh from the Freedom Theory. And it was just a really fun interview. And there was a lot to be learned about being a couple, being a partner, and, and going through the day-to-day -day living of RV travel the pros, the cons, the laugh, the love, all of it was there. So all I can say is kick back, grab yourself a cup of coffee or some tea, and I promise you this is an interview that you will just thoroughly love. So here we go. Let's start the interview right now. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio, and today is a very special day. We have three RV families. The first is going to be RV Travel Quest, which is Rob and Sherry. And the next great guest we have here is the Freedom Theory from Kaylee and Josh. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. And last but not least, we have Spot the Scots on the telephone with us, Christy and Brian. Welcome. Howdy, howdy. Hello. And today, the reason we wanted to get this group together is you guys put out a really good video the other day about RV burnout. And uh, yeah. how, so before we even start, can you kind of de define what RV burnout is in your definition? I think, uh, I think the best definition that I can think of is, is trying to take 10 pounds of fun and putting it in a five-pound bag. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we put out the video because we are guilty of burning ourselves out pretty much 
all the time. We uh, we want to see everything. We want to do everything. And do everything um, when we really shouldn't be. So, like, we're going from point A to point B, and we're going to be there a week later, and then we're like, oh, let's do this on the way, and this on the way, and this on the way, and we'll spend two days here and two days there. And so we keep doing too much in too little of time and then just wishing that we had slowed down because we're exhausted all the time. <laughs> yeah, so so this RV burnout that you've been talking about, and we're going to all take turns talking about it, is what what things are going on that are making you burned out? Like, do you have responsibilities, or is it too much visiting? What is it that really burns? You know, you know go ahead. I, I think it's, it's, it's a combination of all of those. I think it's trying to see everything you can in the very limited time that that you have in, in, in a certain area, on top of your everyday responsibilities of yeah. trying to cook dinner, trying to keep your house clean, trying to, uh, you know, trying to do work, because, you know, we all work from our RVs, of course, trying to keep on uh, keep up on your videos, on blogs. On YouTube. Like, so really what it is is it's not vacation, and so... We tend to get stuck in the mindset like it is vacation and we can do all of these things in this time, but it's not vacation because this is our life, so we can't just put things off until the fun is over and we go home. Because if I don't pay bills and do laundry and clean up the house, well, there's not a definitive end. It's not like next week I should catch up on all that stuff because we just keep going. So we have to learn that we need to balance all of that and and leave enough time for all the daily responsibilities um, in addition to our sightseeing. Agreed, yeah. So I'm going to let the, uh, Kaylee and Josh have a shot at this. So have you guys uh, had RV burnout yet? Or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've done it a couple of times. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, this is gonna be awkward. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have definitely had RV burnout. We've done it a couple of times, and each time we're always like, we're not gonna do this again. We're not gonna do it again, and then we do it again. So the first time was we packed and scheduled with a lot of people and did a lot of things. So we went from. New Mexico to Texas, and then after Texas, we went to Kentucky, then after Kentucky, we went to Louisiana, then after Louisiana, we busted back up to Washington, so it was go, 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 and it was all around the holidays, which are stressful in itself, and it just wrecked us. We got to Washington, and then immediately wanted to leave, because everything that could go wrong went wrong when we got there, so... <sighs> Yeah, and then I look at the times that were a lot slower, and I'm like, oh, we just need to keep at that pace. Why don't we just keep doing that? And I think there's a lot to be said just finding your rhythm when you do start out and figuring out where you want to see and then just letting go some of the places you just can't see, which is so hard because there's so you get that list of things that people tell you to do in a place, and then you're like, oh, I really wanted to do that, and now you have to miss it because you need to do your responsibilities like working and chores and all that jazz so yeah being an adult being an adult <laughs> adulting <as> adulting <laughs> we like your word adulting <laughs> it's kaylee's and least we favorite saying, thing. yeah we have to go adult now yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know i uh, was sherry and i we this is our second time full-time rving and i think the biggest thing i notice is when it starts getting uh the time gets pushed together we start getting cranky, and then, and then we have to go through the procedures of uh, takedown and setup and, and moving, all that. Everything becomes like a real chore. And uh, I, I also find, I think we kind of, at least I bark a little more because I'm losing my patience and I just feel overwhelmed all the time. So uh, um, I think our second time around, I think. Maybe it's age or whatever. Maybe it's because we learned from be before. Uh, we tried our best to not overdo it. And even when with the art with the thousand trails, mm -hmm. I don't even think the four days from one spot to another is enough. Mm -hmm. Because we actually extended here mm -hmm. two more days, yeah. just because we felt like it hasn't been long enough. We needed more time. Yeah, more time. So um, 
I think it's pretty easy for Sherry and I to recognize, but we still find ourselves doing it based off of friends or family could do it, or just uh, we have business obligations too. So, right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you got anything to add to that, uh, you two? Which two? Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm not used, I'm, the Scots. You wanna you wanna do a follow up from what you heard from us? I think our situation has been a little bit different because even though we are full-timers, we still feel like we haven't really been, like, let out of our stage yet, I guess, because we've <laughs> gone from, like, obligation to obligation and lots of things going on with the family. So mm -hmm. I think the reason we got ourselves into burnout this month is because since the summer until now, we've just been taking care of family obligations and we haven't gotten to do any of the things that we thought we'd be doing this year. So we're like, okay, we have this one month that we get to travel. Let's go have fun. Yeah, let's do this and this and this and this and this. And we thought, okay, we can handle it because it's just a month and then we're going to be stationary again. But no, we burned ourselves out bad. <laughs> <laughs> Real bad. <laughs> and I would totally agree. I would have to totally agree with you, Rob, that, uh, you know, pushing ourselves like this really does kind of come back and, and bite us in the butt because, as we try to, you know, pack all of this fun into a smaller bag, uh, you know, a lot of frustrations do come up and arise, and we do end up, you know, having more squabbles between us. And just um, being exhausted, too exhausted to really enjoy everything. Yeah, and not really taking the time to, you know, you know, stop and smell the roses. So um, I definitely get a little bit more barky um, when, we, <laughs> when we burn ourselves out. You know, I tend to hurry to get things done so we can move on to the next thing. And in doing that, it creates more problems. In fact, um, just yesterday, we were changing spots in the morning. And we were in a hurry. We were in a hurry to make a deadline. And we decided to change spots in the RV park. And in the process, I backed the front of the trailer into some tree branches. We scraped the paint. And we scraped the paint on our trailer now, oh. um, which could have completely been avoided if we would have stopped and taken the time to, you know, do things correctly. And in the process of, you know, now damaging our RV, at least the paint, um, you know, we, we ended up kind of snipping at each other and getting a little barky with each other when it was completely unnecessary. But all we really had to do was stop and take our time. Yeah. We just couldn't stop and take our time because we were late for an appointment in L.A. Because, once again, we're packing too many things in. And uh, I've found myself also, I've either forgotten to do something or broken something because I, I didn't have a chance to kind of go through my procedure, of whether it was moving or getting going out the door to dinner or, or just uh, anything. It's like, uh, it seems like when you're just in a rush, you just go insane. <laughs> yeah. How about you guys? Um, Kaylee and you guys, any weird things happen to you? You chime in on this one, Josh. <laughs> Come on, Josh. <laughs> Josh is hey, the guys who chimed in on this one. <laughs> no, I, I'm gathering my thoughts. I'll jump in when I have something to say, but you said it so well. Well, so I think good. Josh always stays really cool, calm, and collected, and all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> <laughs> just, it's like I let it loose, but he's really good with. I tend to be the one who's like, we gotta go, we gotta go. What are you doing? We gotta go, we gotta go. And then he'll sit down and he's like, nope, we gotta break out the checklist. And he will just go through it even if there's a time crunch. <laughs> and he'll go through it one by one. And I think that has saved us many a time. He's like, did you close all the skylights? Did you put down the safety bar? Did you put down this? Did we do that? Did we do a light check? So he's very, very good about that, and I think that's something really important to have. We tell everybody to get a checklist, but there is sometimes it's inevitable. You're going to have something break. It's just those little kind of battle scars you get as you're traveling, um, but it's not fun to be, when you're already in a small space and then you're stressed out, it's not fun. Because <laughs> you're like, you go to one end of the RV and I'll go to the other end of the RV and we're going to cool off. <laughs> You're, you're two feet away now. Take that. You're on the other end of the RV. You're That's all right. five feet away. So the, I can still poke you. Poke, the poke, thing poke, I do, poke. I totally agree with you guys, mm -hmm. is when you are doing your, your 
tear down and preparing, get that checklist. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we don't have anything written down, but we have a very set routine we mm -hmm. go through. We do walk arounds. He, I do a walk around. Mm -hmm. He does a walk around. We check our lights. We do everything. And those definite check marks mm -hmm. are essential because there are so many little things that you really need to be aware of. So before easy you to travel. Make a Yeah. Definitely. So <laughs> that was a, that was awesome. I'm really glad you guys shared that with us. So the next subject I want to give the Scots to have the first chance to talk about is what do you guys do and what are some of the cures and what are some of the causes of cabin fever? Hmm. I don't know that we personally have really experienced cabin fever yet because, as I mentioned before, a lot of this year has been family obligations. Uh -huh. um, so we have been so busy. I don't think we've ever really sat around feeling like we need to get out of the house because we, we keep really, really busy. Mm -hmm. We're out of the house a lot. Yeah, I think it's uh, more of a relief when we actually get to sit down um, and enjoy ourselves at home. Like when we get to sit down and maybe play cards for the evening or... Or yeah. he actually gets able, you know, he's able to knit, and I'm able to read. It's, it's actually, really no, that hasn't even happened yet. I have not knitted since we've <laughs> lived in this thing. Oh goodness! Yeah, we know. we keep so busy, and that was made even more apparent to us when we were in Fort Sight this past week with other RVers our age, because they were all saying to us, "Wow, you guys are always busy." <laughs> yeah. Like, and these are all like the young people that party and stuff, and we're like. We can't party. We're tired because we've been too busy. <laughs> yeah, that's not a fun way to have your adventures start out at <laughs> all. <laughs> yeah. So have you guys had anything that's been, like, weather-related that's kind of caused you to be locked in for a little bit? Um, in Houston, it rained an awful lot. We were there for one of the hurricanes that went through. Yep. Um... But not really. I would say it hasn't really been too limiting for us so far. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna let. Uh, I know uh, we got to talking about this yesterday with Kaylee and Josh, and we've had a lot of rain up here. So I'm gonna let Kaylee and Josh talk about how they deal with the cabin fever because there's been a lot of rain up here lately. Go ahead. Way too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kind of got trapped in our RV when we got back up to Washington and. We spend a lot of time getting out during the summertime, and uh, we just like to get outside. We like to get outside and go for walks. We'd go out and we'd explore whatever area we were in. If we were, um, you know, up in Immigrant Gap in California, we'd drive down to Reno. we just do all this different stuff. And we got back up to Washington, and all of a sudden we're just stuck in rain and in mud. And with a truck that was broken down and just a cell phone booster that was broken and just all this stuff that went wrong and you know pipes were freezing because it was getting down below freezing and we've never dealt with that before fortunately didn't have any pipes burst or anything but you know a lot of stuff all piled up and when you're dealing with all of that and you don't really have any outlet except to just kind of sit in the middle of it especially when you're sick which we got sick too yeah. oh that's right you guys were sick too yeah. you, you get all of that stuff piled in but you're, I think the problem is in an RV, when you've got that stuff like that going on, you're just stuck in the middle of it. Like when we were doing repairs on our floor earlier last year, um, you know, you're living in that space that you're working in. And when your pipes are frozen and your gray tank is full and you can't dump your gray tank until the heater that you've got underneath your RV falls out the pipes <laughs> and your wife wants to take a shower and she can't take a shower because like, the gray tank is full, and then she takes one anyway, and she's up to her ankles in water. <laughs> and then <I> cries, <laughs> and then I proceed to cry. Crying. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you're dealing with all that, and you're right on top of it. You can't go anywhere to get away from it. You can't, it. You can't shut get a out. door and be and, out of sight, out of mind. And what Kaylee and I did is after a couple of weeks of that, we found that we were starting to get at each other's throats a little bit, and we're not typically like that. And uh, so we had to take a step back. We're like, we're getting cabin fever. So one night I came in, I'm like, you know, be ready at six o'clock or whatever. I'm like, I'm taking you on a surprise date. And she loves that. So 
we went out for Persian food because we don't eat out a lot, but we started just making a point of just getting out and just going somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> even even to Walmart. Kaylee hates going to Walmart. And when she told me thank you for taking me to Walmart one time, I knew she really needed to get out. <laughs> I said, you guys actually have a similar problem to what Sherry and I have too, is um I now put all my energy in working on internet stuff just not it's not just uh what you see on youtube i have internet other internet stuff so i'm working on my computer all day and then now, right now sherry's all, all day with me too so and josh has the same kind of scenario you work eight hours a day for a company and so i know it's easy to forget or we work light later than we should and it's like uh, you um, you got to just make rules to just break away and, and do like your date thing. Mm -hmm. And I found ourselves where I kind of made a rule and I, I didn't do that at first where at five or six, when uh, whatever, I need to shut down, stop and do no matter how important my stuff is, stop. <laughs> it's me and Sherry's time. And so that was something kind of hard to learn. Um, it took a while. Um, but uh, I know that you, it's got to be something you guys have been going through. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. How about you? Well, I think it's important to have a little bit of me time. Yeah. Um, I love my husband to death, but I don't want to sit, you know, six inches away from him all day long. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually look forward to the times when I have to go to the laundromat or I can take off on a walk with the dog, uh, pick a book and, and go into the clubhouse and read. Um, so I think it is important to make sure that people give a little bit of space, um, individual space as well as having that together time. So you got to balance all of it together. Agreed. When we were in Las Vegas, we met a couple that said something really cool. They asked us how long we'd been married and we said three years and they said, uh, the husband said, oh, so you guys have been married closer to 10 years. I'm like, what are you talking about? And kind of looked at him funny. He said, well, he said, because you RV. He said, when you're not RVing and you're both going into the office, he said, you're probably actually spending 10% of your time together, if that. Right. He said, when you RV together, you're spending 90% of your time together or more. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. And we were talking about how much closer it makes you feel as a, cup, as a couple and how much our marriage has grown. But by the same token, you can't have that tendency to just be right on top of each other if you don't have <laughs> some system for dealing with that. Right. Yeah. So, actually, I didn't put this in my notes, but I'm going to throw this at everybody. Since we have three families here, and, and this pertains to partners, too, um, when you're RVing, how do you address, or what is some of the common rules that you do with your partner to uh, initiate uh, communication, and I'm talking to the Scots right now. Uh oh, well, let me tell you about <laughs> 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 so, oh boy. Usually, in, in I think in our experience, communication is is normally um, uh, initiated when. There is a miscommunication. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We start off with totally not understanding each other at all. And then we have a probably probably about a, a half hour little squabble about it. And then we actually stop and sit down and actually communicate how we're feeling. So it's, it's normally a trial by fire thing. <laughs> uh, normally it's more fire than anything else. Um, but it usually does come out to um, good communication in the end. And I would definitely think what Josh was just saying applies because when you spend as much time together as we all are, um, not only is communication bound to happen more frequently, but it, it's absolutely needed. You, you can't just necessarily walk away anytime you want or take that cooling off time. I mean, yeah, if you really need it, you can find it. But if you're in the truck all day on a 10-hour drive or whatever, you just have to deal. You have to hammer it out. And um, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, uh, but we try to make it a good thing as much as possible because 
we really can't avoid a topic or just let a disagreement go without talking about it because we're just sitting right there next to each other. Agreed. So we have to work it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you two? Uh, Kaylee and Josh? That's the best kind of marriage therapy is an RV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's so true. There's, yeah something you need to talk about it's gonna you're gonna talk about it real quick because you can't get away from each other yeah I joked around with her yesterday totally joking obviously and I forget how we even got on it but we were playing around and I said uh I said yeah you couldn't leave me if you tried I said I would kind of know what you were up to you know I'd be Kaylee why are you hitching up the RV <laughs> there's something going on here yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace <laughs> out. We're so, so we're stuck together by God. Yeah. you know but there's a lot of truth to it, and you just got to develop those mechanisms for getting your space. And for us, it's when we get cabin fever, though, it's not a matter of us being with each other because we'll go out and still do something. It's just a matter of getting out, 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 out of those out. four little walls right. That are right on top of you. Yeah. For, well, for Rob and I, when it comes to communication, one thing I find with RVing is it actually brings out the best in us. Mm -hmm. Because I just know since we've been on the road full timing, I have laughed more in this last 30 days just giggling and uh, doing these stupid, dumb little things. I've done more laughing than I probably have in the last five years. Yeah. And I think while RVing it and the close communication can be a stress on you, mm -hmm. but it also can be really awesome. Oh, yeah. I agree with I that. I admit this. Oh, yeah, I agree. In the last couple of months, I think there's been a few times that I, I have never laughed so hard. When you laugh so hard, you're like coughing oh, yeah. and, and choking. That kind of funny. And, that, and we haven't had that in a long time. And it's, it's all coming back. But and, and for Sherry and I, I've noticed we also still need to talk out loud about things that are doing. Like, I'll ask her, do you mind if I'm working on a, a video right now? And it's going to be working on that for an hour. She'll go... Absolutely not. And then the whole time I was thinking it was bothering her. And at the same time she'll say, well, I want to play. We don't play games here very often, but when Sherry does, she, um, she she thinks it's a waste, you know, that I, I don't approve of it. And it's like, not at all. It's like, it's so cool to see her have something that she likes to do that's hers. And so we didn't, and we've been married 35 years and we still are finding out things about each other um, just by good communication and asking each other can I do this does this bother you and, and you'd be amazed how many things that are going that you thought you perceived as a problem and it's not so so the next thing uh, we've been moving along here and it's really nice to have you guys in, uh, the Scots with us um, so I know you guys have been really busy but I got another I got another subject for you um, I, I gotta I gotta bring this one ahead here. <laughs> Where did you get the word adulting? Because <laughs> when I looked at when I looked at the your video, at first thing I'm going adultery, and it's like I'm thinking, oh, I've got to see this one. <laughs> so define. Well, we're a very open family. Yeah. <laughs> so define to everybody what adulting is. Adulting is all of that stuff you have to do because you're an adult that you wish you didn't have to do, but because you're an adult, you realize it must be done because it's not going to go away, like dishes and laundry and paying bills. And it's, it's, it's kind of like when you're 15 years old and stuff just magically happens, like the rent is just magically paid. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Food magically appears in the, in, in the icebox. Uh, dinner magically appears on the table. Um, until you realize that it's not really magic, it's, it's adulting. Adult yeah. I love that. <laughs> you gotta be kinda of careful how you say it though. <laughs> yep, yep. It, it, it's kinda of like we'll just be like, Well, I really wanna stay out and play and stay in this beautiful place, but 
We have to go adult right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta go pay them bills. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to let Kaylee and Josh actually add to that. Um, I don't know if you, what's your word for adulting? Oh, that's it. It's adulting. <laughs> I've heard that word many a time. <laughs> I've used it many a time. Is, has there been times that you felt like it's like, oh, yuck. <laughs> yeah, it's when the laundry is like, I've got to do four loads and i got to go do all of them in one day. Oh, that would have oh. today. <laughs> yeah, i got to go do it tomorrow. I'm like, man, I really don't want to be an adult today. <laughs> I just want to walk the dog, go to the beach. <laughs> hang out. <laughs> Coach Josh, you got you're uh, doing nine to five every day, so mm -hmm. that's adult thing, big time. Sometimes yeah, more than that. Yeah, normally yeah. I'm, you know, very frequently I'm not done by five, and that can be a bummer. You know, I work whatever hours have to be worked, and yeah. sometimes those, sometimes days I'll have hardly anything to do at all, which is you know kind of cool, and then. Other times I'll have stretches where I'm working, you know, 18 or more hours a day. And typically those times come in batches. We'll have a batch of a period of time where there's nothing to do, then a period of time where there's everything to do as new projects come in. So I've missed whole areas, basically. Okay. Been, you know, and uh, I think Florence was one place I didn't get to see a lot yeah. of. Um, Lake Conroe I didn't get to see a lot of. You know, and it's kind of a bummer, and it's a bummer for Kaylee, too. But we just have to remind ourselves we're getting this wonderful opportunity to do something that we're just so blessed to be able to do. And even if I don't feel like I can fully experience a place, just to be able to be there and live that lifestyle. And, you know, we can always go back to a place. And that's kind of circling back to burnout, I guess. But yeah. We had to remind ourselves we're not on a vacation. We're on a lifestyle. We can yeah. come back here. Yeah. That's the big thing is the lifestyle thing. So Sherry and I, we have... A kind of a different scenario. Sherry still does contract work. So, like, today was big adulting. We had to set up plane tickets and, and, motels, and, and motels and rental car cars wheels. and uh, coordinate an entire uh, mm -hmm. scenario up in Washington State. And then we also have another scenario right after that. Same kind of scenario. Set up a plane, set up uh, cars and then stuff. Um, all this adult stuff that we have Too to do. Adulting. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> And then, as an RVer, I guess we tried to bring this back into RVing. To me, adulting also was like, oh, man, it's time to flush the tanks. <laughs> <laughs> or, man, I should check, you know, or it's time to check this, time to check that. And um, it's easy to try to talk yourself out of it. But um, So I want to bring a circle around one more time on adulting, but uh, talking about the responsibilities of an RVer. Um, I'm going to go back to the Scots there and say, what parts of adulting do you cringe upon but highly recommend gets done? Oh, man, I would have to say my most cringeworthy adulting uh, scenario right now is I really don't want to rearrange our pantry. <laughs> really? I thought you weren't doing that. So the pantry is something that's, that, you know, it's this big monster this big pink elephant that is just bad. sitting in the kitchen just looking at me every time I walk in. <laughs> um, you know, in, in more recent days, it was, uh, you know, part of the molding in the uh, bunk room came off, and it kind of just sat in there for a week until we got the court site. And then I decided, you know, we're going to have people coming in and taking tours of our rig, so I got to have it, you know, I got to make this look good. So, I mean, it really only took me 10 minutes to do but it's still being an adult and doing it and getting it done. I think it uh, goes along with exactly what Kaylee said earlier, that you can't just, like, shut a door and ignore something. When we were in a stick-to-brick house, if there was some project you didn't want to do or something you didn't want to face, it was very easy to ignore because you're 3,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Now it's like whatever's wrong and needs to be done is right there. So you really do have to just adult and face it. That's good stuff. Okay, how about, uh, I'm going to let Kaylee and Josh uh, comment on the uh, RV-related adulting that drives you crazy. Doing the dishes all the time. Oh, <laughs> dishes. Oh. All the time, because I like batch cooking, so since I got the Instant Pot, it was like, okay, I'm going to make like three meals in one day, and all of a sudden the kitchen is just trashed, and Josh, our rule in our house is I cook and Joshua cleans. He does all the dishes. 
but there's sometimes I'll just go through and just get them all done. But just making the mess, sometimes I'll have to clean as I go because I have to use the same pot mm -hmm. over and over and over again or the same silverware over and over again because you're limited, right, in the amount of storage we've got. So that is a pain having to do that. And also sweeping. I don't like you have to sweep and vacuum all the time too because dirt and dust. Like these are the things no one tells you that when you get into your little RV, there's going to be dust everywhere yeah. and you're going to get sand and stuff all over and you're going to have to clean constantly. And I think for me, it is probably going underneath the RV to get stuff out of storage because <laughs> oh, great. I would be on always one. get... Three rolls of toilet paper when we need toilet paper. One goes in the bathroom, two goes under the sink, and when we run out, we pull the last one out from under the sink, we go get three more. One of us remembers to do that. One of us doesn't. I won't name any names, but I will say it always runs out at 10 o'clock at night when one of us is in our PJs and it's pouring down rain outside. And the other one has to put on their rain jacket and go out in the rain and crawl underneath the RV and pull out the laundry basket to get back there and get the toilet paper and get it. That happens to one of us. And it's that type of adult thing that often leads to communication. Yes, we're right back to communication um, again. To communication. But no, in all seriousness, um, there's stuff you have to do. You know, I got up to... Um, we got to Monroe, Washington, and we had been in Mount Vernon and dealt with all this stuff with our truck and got down to Monroe and it was still freezing, you know, at night and stuff and went to hook up into our campsite and the previous person had screwed their elbow down into the sewer, which was fine. That's what you're supposed to do, but it had frozen and instead of taking five minutes to boil some water and dump it on and pour it out, they just broken it. So I had to thaw it out and then get on rubber gloves and dig their sewer nozzle out of the sewer. And it's, it's nobody wants You know, to it's raining and I got this stuff on my hands and I'm just like, you know, but who else is going to do it? I mean, I could have called the rangers to do it, but our tanks needed to be dumped and who knows when they would have. There's just stuff like that you got to deal with. And when it happens to your house, you just got to deal with it and you never know when that stuff will come up. Especially the toilet paper. Especially the toilet paper. <laughs> so, Sherry, um, move over to our family real quick. Sherry brought up something that it's, some people think moving into an RV is uh, uh, easier and not as much responsibility as the household, but you said it actually sometimes is harder. And so it, it, it is harder. Um, living small is much harder because you always have to Put things away. When you take it out, you got to put it away. You've got things you've got to do every day. You cannot, uh, like Christy had said, you know, close the door and hide it. You just got to deal with it every single day. And if you don't have that drive to, you know, keep pushing you forward and stuff, I can see where things would pile up and just add to more of the stress level. Mm -hmm. I love the lifestyle, but it, it is work. Yeah. I know, I kind of, um, the ad with Sherry stuff is, I probably, you know, I'll, I'll take the, the side of being a guy, I kind of had to make it a rule to me, constantly remind myself, and I still fail a lot, but I think I'm 80% better as if I pull it out, put it back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so... Yeah, and, and and yeah, I guess as a kid, sometimes it magically goes away, and it's only because I have a great partner that takes care of me. And <laughs> on those twenty percent of times, I don't put things away. So uh, communication again, but anyway, but yeah, um, that's real common. So what I want to do now is is I want to make sure that everybody is listening to the show, and we're getting quite the uh, showing of people that listen to our show now. Uh, I want to make sure that we all have a chance to uh, put something positive, and and not none of this is to me is negative at all. This is just life, and I, I think it's important that we pass along to I think three great families that are, are sharing their lives, being positive, and 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 sh and and making sure that all aspects of our being is being uh, communicated to the people that watch our shows. So I want to start with the Scots, and I want to just say, 
if you, based on the kind of subject that we talked about tonight when it comes to communication and, and um, days that you get cooped up in the RV or being, um, or being too busy, what are, um, what are the biggest messages you want to pass on to people that are RVers and are, want to become an RVer based off of all the things that we've kind of talked about tonight? <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, I think it's brought us closer together as a couple. Um, Definitely. You know, it's made our relationship much stronger, um, being together so much. Um, it, it does make you communicate, and, uh, you know, in our case, communication only leads to better things. We're like two peas in a pod now. Yeah, we get to share this wonderful lifestyle together of, of not only doing our everyday normal um, you know, adulting, but we also get to do it everywhere. We get to enjoy all these new places together and see all these new places and experience all these new things together. Um, and that's really made us, you know, that much better of a couple, and it's done wonders for our marriage. It just makes us happy. I mean, we're both doing what we want to do, and all this adult stuff would have to be done no matter what type of lifestyle we were living this is have to be done. Yeah, it may be easier to ignore it for longer, but we all know that just makes it harder when you finally do it. So um, it's actually kind of a good thing. Like, yeah, it's more work. Like Barry was saying, you have to always put things away and have to always do the dishes and always on top of stuff. But at the same time, it, it brings you, I guess, happiness because you are always kind of on top of it. Um, it makes you feel like you have more control of your life. Yeah, it, and it, it's more manageable. So, I mean, it may be a little bit more work, but I think that it makes us really happy living this way. Wow. And we get to be wherever we want to be, whenever we want to be, and it makes paying bills and <laughs> doing dishes a little bit, a little bit easier. Oh, wow, great answer, boy. Uh, I'm going to pass that same kind of idea to uh, uh, Kaylee and Josh here about kind of summing up we talked about a lot of negative, but what's the positive that comes out of all this? I would say the time, like the quality time we get together. And I think just overall with RVing, the pros far outweigh the cons of it. There's going to be things that you've never, it's a whole different lifestyle, right? There's going to be things that come up that you've never had to deal with ever. And now you have to deal with them. But the pros of yeah being able to wake up like we wake up and we're like where are we like we have to like sometimes think about where we are like that is such a cool thing like not everybody gets to do that like especially with this younger generation of RVers coming up this people who are working like to be able to do that and wake up and not remember where you are like that's that's a pretty cool thing um uh, so yeah I just think the pros are far better and we wouldn't trade it for anything. If somebody is listening to this and they're like, ooh, I don't think I would touch RVing with a 10-foot pole, there's just so much beauty that you get to see. And Josh and I have just grown stronger a lot. Like you guys said, it just brings out things that you just probably wouldn't have learned in a marriage for years and years and years. And I think it's such a blessing that we can go through those now, and it just makes you so much happier overall. Well, the one thing I would leave with people, because Kaylee said everything that I would say, so I'll say something else. <laughs> um, I guess in terms of just the philosophy of it, it is what you make it. It's like anything in life. RVing is what you make it. And if you look at every negative thing that happens or every hardship and, you know, kind of have a woe is me attitude, well, you're never going to be happy. And you're never going to be happy in a sticks and brick house or anything else, but like Kaylee said, there are so many pros to it. And we just set out and made a choice that, yeah, there's going to be times that are rough. There's going to be times with water damage and frozen sewer nozzles and <laughs> frozen pipes and all of this stuff. But, you know, you get through those times and then you look around and now instead of sitting, you know, in a Seattle suburb, Kaylee and I are sitting here in Seaside, Oregon with friends we've met on the road. I mean, it is what you make it. And I think Haley summed it up really well by just saying there's far more pros than cons with the lifestyle. So go into it if you're new to it, knowing that there will be challenges, but 
that the challenges are all overcomable. Many, many people have overcome them and still are. Yeah. Want to go for it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, it very, very similar. It does bring Rob and I closer, and we've been we've known each other since we were seven years old and married for thirty five years, and. Even after that time, we still find new things out about each other. Uh, some of the things that I really enjoy is I love seeing our country. Uh, and there's so much of our country I haven't seen. This has given me an opportunity to hit some of those things on my bucket list. And so that really excites me. I love taking photography, so I get to do something I enjoy doing. But what really it does for me is I tend to be very... Um, kind of held back personality kind of quiet is we are meeting people on the road every single day I met a whole bunch of people today just in the clubhouse watching a football game <laughs> and I never got those opportunities when we lived in our house sure. is you know like you go in you close your door and I didn't wasn't active this lifestyle keeps me active and it forces me to meet people and um, it just makes me feel full, complete. Yeah. I think the one thing I'd want to add to it is we got the RV before and we lost that opportunity about six years ago. And then we had to go through five years of kind of hardship to kind of get back to this again. What motivated us is the message I wanted to say to people is if you can RV the rest of your life, great. If you can only RV for six months, or maybe you've set aside enough money to do it for a year, and maybe you have to go back to the corporate scene, those memories that you got, like for the first time we RV'd, you cannot take away. And it also goes with getting older in your age, is eventually there'll be a time, and hopefully a long time for her, but that maybe my hip might go out, or I might have bad knees, and I can't, or health might slow us down and we can't do this anymore. But because we did this, we have memories you cannot take away from me and Sherry. And so I don't know if people, as you get older, you realize how important those kind of memories are. And, and those are the things that keep you motivated. But there'll be a time, and, and you may not feel, you know, we have all age brackets here, but there will be a time that you may not be able to do this anymore. And I just want to pass on that. Even if you can only do it for a half a year or whatever, do it. Just do it. Because that will be the uh, piece of your life that will keep you motivated and, and make you smile uh, till the day you die. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'd like to pass on. So I want to take the time, especially the guys. I know you had a very, very busy schedule. Are you guys still awake over there? <laughs> yeah. Just barely, just barely, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, you guys, I, I am so grateful that you uh, took the time to uh, uh, come on board with us tonight. And uh, from, um, so we're gonna wrap it up so you guys can get your uh, get <laughs> probably settled in because you just drove up and got on the phone with us. So I just I want to make sure that our <laughs> audience knows that uh, I'm so grateful that you did that. And I do want to definitely thank uh, Josh and Kaylee for coming over. And we've all become really good friends uh, over the last few months as we've all, um, and, it, and I think we actually are all ages. I mean, we've got all barriers of ages here. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So anyway, from yeah. our time, so um, I'm going to give you guys a chance. Uh, if you guys want to, uh, if you have any special messages to pass on to everybody and say goodbye, I'm going to let the Scots have the uh, podium for a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> well, firstly, I want to say how how jealous we are that four of you are hanging out and we're not there. <laughs> I wish you were we here. Are, you know, we, we follow all of you guys, and uh, I'm always texting daily about the most random things, and um, I think that we uh, must have known each other in another life or something. I think so. <laughs> and uh, we just wish that we were there with you guys. It's so cool that this community although big, can feel so small. Like, we can just kind of feel like neighbors. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah and, you know, it's, it's such a pleasure to, to all, you know, to be on with you guys and to be able to talk with you guys about all this stuff and share our story. 
And, you know, Rob, we love talking with you and Sherry. And, uh, you know, we love being able to collaborate. And, you know, it's just a real pleasure for us to be, to really be a part of this community and, um, you know, really kind of spread the message of the RV lifestyle. Definitely. And it helps to know that we're not alone in the things that we deal with and struggle with and also the things that make us feel this happy. Well, well, we sure, I know all of us are really glad to have your friendship. And yeah, we're looking forward to meeting you. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to all get together in one room. <laughs> yeah. So I can give uh, give it over to uh, Kaylee and Josh for a minute. Go ahead. I think it's the same for us. We couldn't have said it any better. Christy and Brian, <laughs> really just thank you guys for being able to come all together. And, yeah, this community, if that's not enough for you to get into RVing, I don't know what is. Because, like Sherry said, you just meet so many incredible people that you just never would have met before. And the stories you hear and... It's such a cool, thank goodness for the internet, it's such a cool way to meet people who are traveling, you know, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube or through a podcast, like, it's just everybody embraces each other and loves to hear each other's stories and is so encouraging and friendly, and I'm so grateful for it. And sure, you can. Um, a big thing I'm going to make sure is, is, is those who have been listening, uh, the families that we have on the show today, uh, I feel are just exceptional people. And please take the time to look in our uh, uh, description below of the show you're watching. And I'll make sure that there's links to both the sites, of whether it's Facebook or, the, or YouTube's, for both families. And if you're not following Spot the Scots or Freedom Theory or <laughs> RV Travel Glass... <laughs> Uh, I, I really feel like you're missing out, and I do urge you to take the opportunity to uh, uh, share, our, well, share your time with us, and we'll share our time with you. And so uh, I, I hope that um, this show was a good example of just what it, real life is like, and there's no age barrier whatsoever. Um, it's all about attitude and, 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 and enjoying life. So... I'm going to um, go ahead and sh uh, bring down the show here to uh, say thank you to everybody that watched the show today. And I want to thank everybody that's on the show today. And I guess it's not watch, but listen. <laughs> they got too many forums there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell them there's yeah, their cameras around here. Where's the 360? <laughs> oh, don't even talk about that one. So anyway, so um, from RV Talk Radio, I want to thank you for listening. Please take the time to... Uh, uh, look at all these channels. Uh, once again, one's called Spot the Scots, the other one's Freedom Theory, and the other one's RV Travel Quest. I want to thank you once again, and have a great day. Bye now. That concludes our interview with the Freedom Theory, Spot the Scots, and RV Travel Quest. We apologize for the sound issue. We're not sure what caused that. We were doing something a little different than we ever done before, so we just got to kind of live with our mistakes and try to do better next time. Uh, we did filter it the best we can, but there was a noise issue that I just could not filter out, so I apologize. And we do understand that there's an issue, and we'll do it differently next time. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. I hope it was clear enough for everybody to, to hear okay. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. I want to thank you very much for watching the show. We'd love to hear your comments and feedback. And on this audio issue, uh, <laughs> we're quite aware of it. We truly apologize. Anyway, have a great week. We'll see everybody next Monday. Thanks for listening. Bye now.